There are uh, thousands of comedians in this country, but basically only two types of humor. There's the old school and the new school. I think we recognize them both. The old school is uh, largely made up of the fast-paced stand-up comedians, the one-liner comics who came from vaudeville and burlesque, and uh, they comprise the insult school of humor. Jackie Leonard is a good example of this. Oh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'd just like to say it's wonderful you're back here in New York once again. It's a wonderful town. Thank you very much. You've got some lovely girls here compared to the last place I worked. Somebody uh, brought there was so ugly that if you wanted to pay him a compliment, you had to say, how do you do? I see your face cleared up. <laughs> Now, uh, by contrast, in the new school, we have many different styles, but the foremost among them, I feel, is Mort Saul, the first man to do much with political comedy uh, since Will Rogers. Mort Saul. Right, good, right, good, right. That's right, right, good, right. <laughs> right. Uh, basically, right, good, that's right, yeah. Uh, basically, it's a dichotomy of guilt in society. We're concerned with it, right? Right, good, right, onward, good. That covers the comedians that we pay to see. There is, however, a third field, generally unrecognized among humorists, and that's White House humor. JFK, the present resident president. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Attorney General, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the members of the Supreme Court, and the rest of my family. <laughs> all over the country and Canada have been asking for us to bring back George Carlin. So ladies and gentlemen, here is comedian, comedy star, George Carlin. Hey, baby, what's happening? Hey. Que pasa? How sleet here, you hippy dippy weather, man. Brought to you by Parsons Pest Control. Do you have termites, water bugs, and roaches? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Parsons Pest Control will get rid of the termites and water bugs and let you keep the roaches. <laughs> Tonight's forecast, dark. <laughs> Continued dark tonight. <laughs> Turning to partly light in the morning. And the big fight is coming up. Ali and Frazier, Muhammad Ali. I call him Muhammad Ali because that's what he wants. Oh, yeah, he's a big dude and he hits hard, you know. I'll call him what he wants. But uh, it's good that he's being allowed to work again. As you know, he couldn't work for three years. Uh, of course, he had a strange job beating people up. But that was his, you know, he is right. He could have that job. Government wanted him to change jobs. Government wanted him to kill people. Yeah. Yeah. He thought it over and he said, no, that's where I draw the line. Uh, I'll beat him up, but I don't want to kill him. And the government told him, well, if you won't kill him, we won't let you beat him up. Uh, And it was all because he didn't want to go to Vietnam, and now we're getting out of Vietnam, through Laos and Cambodia. <laughs> That's gotta be the long way. You gotta go through China and Russia to get out that way. What are we gonna tell them? We'll only be here a short time. We're just looking for a trail. Well, maybe they'll go for it, I don't know. Of course, we're only there in Southeast Asia for one reason, to free the people so they can have industry. Isn't that what we do everywhere, I think? We kind of free people and then lay a little industry on them so they can have all the benefits of industry that we have. <coughs> oh. oh, beautiful for smoggy skies, insecticided grain, for strip-mined mountains, majesty above the asphalt plain. America, America, man sheds his waste on thee and hides the pines with billboard signs from sea to oily sea. I used to be this guy, or maybe this guy used to be me. I don't know. We were each other at one time. It wasn't long ago. He, uh, I liked him, you know. He was really good. He was funny, and I had a lot of fun with him. He did some nice things for me, but it was like, um, there was nothing behind him, you know? He was kind of 
Just superficial, just the surface. It was all characters. I wasn't in there. I found out I wasn't in my own act after a while, and here I'd been doing it for five years. It was all characters. It was all other people that I remembered from my life, and composites of people. People like this lady here, Congolia Brackenridge, a marvelous contestant on a quiz show. Pick a door. Oh, let me see. Monty, Monty. Oh, how many? What are the doors? One, two, and three. Oh, wow. What was that again? One, two, and three. Uh, Okay, three. You what? Wait, one. No, hold on. I didn't go yet. There so are things about the words surrounding football and baseball which give it all away. Football is technological. Baseball is pastoral. <laughs> football is played in a stadium. Baseball is played in a park. <laughs> in football, you wear a helmet. In baseball, you wear a cap. <laughs> Football is played on an enclosed rectangular grid and every one of them is the same size. <laughs> baseball is played on an ever-widening angle that reaches to infinity and every park is different. <laughs> Football is rigidly timed. Baseball has no time limit. We don't know when it's going to end. We might even have extra inning. In football, you get a penalty. In baseball, you make an error. Whoops. <laughs> the object in football is to march downfield and penetrate enemy territory and get into the end zone. In baseball, the object is to go home. <laughs> and going home. And in football, they have the clip, the hit, the block, the tackle, the blitz, the bomb, the offense, and the defense. In baseball, they have the sacrifice. What I have been doing, I've been yeah. branching out a little bit. My career has always been very one-dimensional, just right. being a stand-up comic. And I've been doing a couple other things. I worked some summer stock last summer. Did I was you really? in, Yeah. I was in uh, Death of a Salesman. I played the suitcase. Ah, good. <laughs> Yeah, I did a little different for Rip Torn played the original suitcase on Broadway and I, I understand he did it uh, more as a valise and I kind of uh, I did it as a two-suitor you, ah. so, you know things like uh, that I got an opera I've written an opera it's interesting too you have an opera singer tonight Brenda Blue, I've yeah. written an opera about tuberculosis and the only trouble is trying <laughs> yeah well the trouble is trying to find a thin tenor you know this is <laughs> yeah. well, serious now I'm writing a sequel to the Bible <laughs> It's a wonderful book. It's been around a long time. I think it's time for another. And uh, I, I, I'm having trouble with the title. I go Bible 2, I want to call it Bible 2. Son of Bible, you get into those things. Uh, the Bible goes west, you know. That's all your house is? It's a place to keep your stuff while you go out and get more stuff. Now, sometimes, sometimes you've got to move. You've got to get a bigger house. Why? Too much stuff. You've got to move all your stuff. And maybe put some of your stuff in storage. Imagine that. There's a whole industry based on keeping an eye on your stuff. <laughs> Enough about your stuff. Let's talk about other people's stuff. Did you ever notice when you go to somebody else's house, you never quite feel 100% at home? You know why? No room for your stuff. Somebody else's stuff is all over the place. And what awful stuff it is. Where did they get this stuff? <laughs> and if you have to stay overnight at someone's house, you know, unexpectedly, and they give you a little room to sleep in that they don't use that often, someone died in it 11 years ago, <laughs> and they haven't moved any of his stuff. <laughs> or wherever they give you to sleep, usually right near the bed, there's a dresser, and there's never any room on the dresser for your stuff. Someone else's shit is on the dresser. <laughs> Have you noticed that their stuff is shit and your shit is stuff? 